I was in the seventh grade. And it was the day before the annual science fair. Now, I was the undisputed queen of the science fair. <laughs> and not because I was a science nerd, but because I had a very innovative mom. And this time, we had made a beautiful model of the solar system. Not only were the planets scaled to perfection, but they also rotated around the sun as we had a small motor in the center. That motor had cost me all my pocket money. Now midnight, before the big day, I thought I'd just try it one last time. I flicked the on switch and it didn't work. My heart beating fast, I tried it again and again, but nothing. I shouted for my mom and she came running inside the room. She took one look at the model and understood the problem. Looking around the room, she thought for a minute. She then smiled, turned around and removed the clock from the wall. She unscrewed the hands carefully and pasted the sun in the center. She flicked the on switch. It was magic. It worked incredibly. Now this moment of ingenuity fascinated me. Why hadn't I thought of the clock instead of that bulky, noisy motor in the first place? I realized that this creativity had only been possible due to the first time and resource constraints. Over the years, I observed this process several times across many incidents and identified a very strange theme. Creativity loves constraints. And why is that? Fewer constraints means more choice. And choice is paralyzing. We humans are terrible at decision making. How many of you have given up on watching the movie after spending hours flicking through Netflix? <laughs> Constraints actually give us the building blocks to start experimenting with. In a recent experiment, participants were divided into two groups and asked to compose rhymes. One group was given a set of eight randomly generated nouns, and the other group was free to use whichever words they wanted. Judges evaluated their rhymes and were surprised to find that the group that was working under constraints had more creative, more novel rhymes. Yes, creativity loves constraints. In India, often capital and regulatory constraints are a way of life for entrepreneurs. And creativity thrives. We even have a Hindi word for it. It's called Jugaad. Jugaad is a flexible approach to problem solving that stems from a can-do attitude. It is a mental leap that permits one to accept the challenge of constraints and leads to disruptive designs and products. And this concept is not just Indian. Take the example of Israel, a nation that has combated war and intolerance with unparalleled innovation, earning it the name Startup Nation. During a study trip, I interacted with local entrepreneurs, and I was surprised to find that they actually attributed Israel's successes to its constraints. But I also heard stories where the concept of Jugaad was met with disdain and rejection. While working in Mumbai, my favorite hangout place was this rooftop restaurant opposite my office building. One night, there was a massive fire that destroyed the place. It was a horrific incident. 14 people died. The reason had been an illegal bamboo roof structure that caught fire easily. The owners were not able to get the approvals on time and had resorted to this quick fix to deal with that constraint. For weeks after that, I could see the sad ashes and the burnt remains of the rooftop from the window near my work desk. It was a painful pinch that served as a constant reminder that working around constraints could lead to disastrous consequences. I lost all hope. Jugaad was going to be overtaken, watered down, and used as an excuse for sloppy thinking. And this gross misapplication of creativity makes me angry. If you can make a low quality, dangerous product at a low budget, how is that creativity? If you can break the law to deal with that constraint, how is that creativity? Creativity is that handheld ECG monitor made by GE scientists at a fraction of the original cost, but has saved millions of lives in rural India. Creativity is that beautiful baby incubator made by GSB alumni, which, was ha which had to be made at a fraction of cost, but was even better than the original concept 
because it allowed the mother to hold the baby while it was being incubated. While working in Mumbai, I, I was working on a development project to increase literacy in rural Rajasthan. And I came across a tricky problem. I noticed that students were unable to go to school and have continued education because they were traveling for several miles. They traveled on camelback for several days at a stretch with their tribes and communities. Now, given the limited funds at my disposal, I could not solve this problem by going about building schools in the desert. I considered using technology and maybe providing tablets to the tribes, but the, because of the limited access to electricity and internet, this would have never worked. Given the cost and technology and location constraints, I needed a jugar. But the ashes were still fresh in my memory. I needed a solution that could speak to my concept of jugar. I needed a solution that could work within the constraints and yet trump the traditional solution in its quality and utility. Identifying the problem, I thought that if the kids could not go to school because they were traveling, what if the school went with them? We designed the idea of a mobile school, which was a simple cart on wheels furnished with books, chart paper, a blackboard, and then we trained a few teachers in every community. Things fell into place. This initiative transformed the lives of nomadic communities. We realized that not just kids, even the adults had a lot of idle time while traveling for days at a stretch. This easy access to books and teachers stirred their curiosity, and they started attending the mobile school as well. With a cascading effect, entire communities started becoming literate. Next time, when you are faced with an innovation challenge, be it to design a new product, launch a new strategy, or even to prepare your evening meal, I invite you to think about my story and try these three steps. One, identify the underlying need. For us, the need was not building schools. It was educating the children. Two, recognize your constraints. We needed a solution that would work within our location, time, capital constraints. And if there aren't any constraints, fit yourself with seemingly unattainable goals in terms of delivery time, functionality, or inputs. Challenge yourself to prepare that meal with just four ingredients. Challenge yourself to sketch that first prototype in one hour and experiment with that. Remember, creativity loves constraints. Three, and the most important, believe that you can solve the problem. Jugar thinking is a leap of faith that needs a lot of experimentation and may result in failure, so brace yourself. We did not know if the community would even accept the solution of a school traveling with them, but they welcomed it. And year after the launch, an 85-year-old man from the community wrote me a letter. It said, because of you, no one will say that I died illiterate. Reading that letter, my faith in Jugar thinking was reborn. A jugaad is what allowed me to impact him and thousands others. A jugaad was that aha moment when I solved the puzzle of constraints. A jugaad is that gift my mom gave me when she solved my model years and years ago. A jugaad is my offering to you. And next time, when you are faced with an innovation challenge, shackle yourself with constraints and unleash the freedom of creativity. Thank you. Thank you.